So for this video, I'm going to be doing exactly as the title says, and I'm going to be turning sunflower oil into biodiesel. With the recent increase in gas prices, I was curious to see how difficult it is to make biodiesel. But first, we have to figure out what both sunflower oil and biodiesel are made of. Sunflower oil is mostly made up of triglycerides, which are essentially just a combination of glycerol and free fatty acids. Then there are also diglycerides and monoglycerides, which just have two or one fatty acid bound. Besides the glycerides, there is also a small amount of free fatty acids and some fat soluble vitamins. Biodiesel only consists of one component, which are fatty acid methyl esters, or FAME for short, which are essentially a combination of methanol with a fatty acid. Compared to regular diesel, biodiesel is chemically completely different. Diesel contains a large variety of different compounds, while biodiesel only contains fatty acid methyl esters. Since they are chemically different, biodiesel has about 5 to 10% lower energy density compared to regular diesel, and it is also rougher on the combustion system. Even though biodiesel does have a strong reduction in the emission of pollutants, it still contributes to acid rain, air pollution, and climate change if it was produced unsustainably. So to get biodiesel, I need to convert the glycerides in my sunflower oil into fatty acid methyl esters. To do this, I can apply something called transesterification. To do a transesterification, I only need two chemicals besides my sunflower oil, which are just sodium hydroxide and methanol. What is done first is that the sodium hydroxide is dissolved in some methanol. This causes an equilibrium reaction between the sodium hydroxide and methanol to take place, which forms methoxide ions, sodium ions and water. These methoxide ions can be used to attack the triglycerides and force a transesterification to take place. In short, what is happening is that the methoxide ions attack the carbonyl carbon of the acer bond in the triglyceride, which causes the electron pair of one of the carbonyl double bonds to move onto the oxygen atom. Afterward, the oxygen atom doesn't want to keep those electrons on itself and forces the double bond to reform, but this forces one of the bonds on the carbon to break since we cannot have a carbon with five bonds. So in this circumstance, the electron pair that forms the bond between the oxygen of the glycerol part and the carbon moves onto that oxygen, since this is more favorable than kicking off the methoxide that was just attached. And then, what we get are the fatty acid methyl esters, and the electron pair that just moved onto the glycerol oxygen will steal a hydrogen atom from water to form glycerol and to reform the catalyst, which in turn will continue the reaction by making more methoxide ions. So after this reaction, I can separate the glycerol and biodiesel and purify the biodiesel to get my final biodiesel product. To test the biodiesel, I will soak some cotton balls and set them on fire. So to get started, I will dry the sunflower oil with some calcium chloride. As we have seen, the reaction is in equilibrium with water on the right side. If there is too much water present in the mixture, the equilibrium will start favoring the left side, which will mean there are less methoxide ions, which will decrease the efficiency of the reaction. So removing as much water from the reactants as possible will prevent it from slowing down the reaction. I'm not sure what the water content of the sunflower oil is, but I'm doing it just in case. After a while, the sunflower oil is dried, and I can remove the calcium chloride by filtering the oil through a paper filter with vacuum filtration. The vacuum makes the oil foam a little, but after a while it stops and we can see that the oil is clear again. So I set aside the dried sunflower oil and I start preparing the other part of this reaction, which is dissolving some sodium hydroxide in methanol. I combine 100 milliliters of methanol that I have dried beforehand with molecular sieves and 3.25 grams of sodium hydroxide. Here I already start making the reactive methoxide ions and it is important to fully dissolve the sodium hydroxide in the methanol before using it. Otherwise it will take a lot longer to dissolve in the reaction mixture which will slow down the reaction. I don't show it here but I mix them off camera till it was fully dissolved. Then I set it up for a simple reflux and I can now add 500 milliliters of the dried sunflower oil to the reaction flask. While stirring, I add the methanol sodium hydroxide solution to the oil and stopper the flask and start heating the mixture to 60C. 
So now the reaction can just be left alone for a few hours and I can come back later. During the reaction, I added a thermometer to make sure my reaction mixture was the right temperature. We can see that vapors have condensed in the flask, which is why it is important to use a condenser. We cannot allow the methanol to escape since we need it for the reaction. So after about 3.5 hours, the reaction should be finished, so I removed the heat source. We can also see that the color has changed, which is a good sign that the reaction has taken place. After letting the flask cool down, the mixture has separated into two layers. The biodiesel layer is on top, and the glycerol layer is on the bottom. Since biodiesel is much less dense than glycerol, and it also produces around three times as much moles of biodiesel compared to glycerol. So the biodiesel layer has a lot more volume and lays on top. So since the layers separate relatively easily, I can take most of the biodiesel layer simply by pouring it out. So the first pour is entirely the biodiesel layer, but as I start pouring more, the layers mix slightly, so I need to wait for them to separate again and use the separation funnel to get the biodiesel layer. So as you can see, the layers are slowly separating, and after a while they have fully separated, and I can simply drain the lower glycerol layer and discard it, and then drain the remaining biodiesel. So now that I have separated the biodiesel layer completely, I need to wash the biodiesel, considering there are still remaining impurities like sodium hydroxide, methanol, glycerol, and fatty acids. But first I add toluene to dissolve the biodiesel. Since impurities like soaps can cause the mixture to foam strongly when mixed with water, a solvent is added to prevent this. If this is done without a solvent, it could foam so much that the layers will not separate again. I don't show it all here, but I wash the biodiesel layer several times with water, dilute hydrochloric acid, and finally with a saturated sodium sulfate solution. The water will wash away remaining sodium hydroxide, methanol, glycerol and soaps. Then, if there is any sodium hydroxide or soap left, hydrochloric acid will turn sodium hydroxide into water and sodium chloride, and the soaps will be destroyed and turned back into fatty acids and sodium chloride. It is possible that there will be some fatty acid impurity in the biodiesel, and likely some remaining glycerides, but it is less of a problem than soaps. So after I've washed all of my biodiesel, I need to remove the toluene, so I simply set it up for distillation so I can recover some of my toluene. I set a high temperature to make sure the toluene will boil, and then I insulate the flask with some aluminum foil. After a while, I come back and we can see that the volume has decreased a bit, and it has turned more yellow, which is a good sign since biodiesel is supposed to be yellow. We can also see in the receiving flask that I collected a decent amount of toluene. After washing and boiling the biodiesel, there still is water left in the biodiesel from the washing steps. So like I did with the sunflower oil, I dry the biodiesel with calcium chloride. And then, after it has been sitting for a day, I set it up for a vacuum filtration to filter it all out. This time I can use a glass filter, since biodiesel is a lot less viscous than sunflower oil, and it can pass through much easier. After everything is filtered through, we are left with a clear, slightly yellow liquid, which I transfer to its own container. So now, since biodiesel is a fuel, let's test it by putting it on fire, and comparing the difference to sunflower oil. To do this, I set up two watch glasses and put some cotton on top of them. Then, to the left I add 10 milliliters of sunflower oil, and to the right I add 10 milliliters of my biodiesel. And now all I need to do is put it on fire, which I will do using my torch. The sunflower oil doesn't really want to burn, but the biodiesel easily catches fire and produces a very sooty flame. So after it is basically finished, I just put it out with some water. Normally don't put water on an oil fire, but now it doesn't really matter. I test the same with both liquids separately, and it is basically the same result. So I put out the flame early with a beaker. 
since the biodiesel is producing such a sooty flame, it makes me think that there is still a decent amount of toluene left in the biodiesel. Sooty flames are very characteristic for lower carbon to hydrogen ratio molecules like benzene and toluene, so to see if it makes any difference, I will try to remove as much of the toluene as I possibly can. To compare the result, I put a bit of my current biodiesel in a vial to use for later. Then I take all of the remaining biodiesel and put it into a flask. I will heat the flask and at the same time pull a vacuum on it. This should cause the toluene to easily boil off and I will just allow it to go through my pump which it can handle. In hindsight, it would probably be better to do a vacuum distillation initially when I was first recovering the toluene. Anyhow, I just leave it to boil in a vacuum overnight. The next day I come back and there is nothing boiling even at high temperatures and being under vacuum, so most of the toluene should be gone by now. So after leaving the biodiesel to cool, it is again a clear yellow liquid, which again I will test with the same method. So I set up two watch glasses again, with a column ball on top, and add my original biodiesel to the right, and on the left my further purified biodiesel. The purified biodiesel is a bit more difficult to ignite, so the toluene is definitely helping the other. I don't see too much of a difference in the flame, so maybe a biodiesel flame is just quite sooty. So that was a way to get biodiesel from sunflower oil. It was relatively simple to do, though the purification could definitely be improved. 